Welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to pay yourself first. So this is an old school personal finance concept that your grandma probably taught you, uh, AKA a penny saved is a penny earned. So if you've ever heard that phrase, that's pretty much what this is, except I'm going to bring this into the 21st century and show you exactly how to automate your savings so that you never have to worry about saving money again. So the philosophy is this. So picture someone that's working a W-2 job and they have direct deposit or they get checks every two weeks, for example, with their paycheck. So let's start with this. Your checking account, just assuming for this video and for this example, is where all your money flows into, okay? So this is where you get paid. The way that we're gonna teach you how to pay yourself first is simply automate this process using an online bank. So I personally use Capital One 360. I've been using it since I was like 21 years old and I've had it ever since. Right now their rates are at about 2%, but there are other offers out there that are at 2.4, 2.35, I know Goldman Sachs is using 2.25, so you can squeeze a little bit more out if you do decide to go this route. So ultimately, Capital One is an online bank, meaning they can give you a higher uh, annual percentage yield on your money, meaning they can pay you a higher interest because they don't have the overhead that brick and mortar shops do. So in order to implement this, what I do is I have a banking account with a brick and mortar bank, let's call it like a Key Bank, PNC, uh, Wells Fargo, doesn't matter. These are your retail banks that you can drive up to, use the ATM, visit the people in person, et cetera, et cetera. So this checking is where my W-2 income comes in for my full-time job. What I do is incorporate Capital One 360, and what I do is I create five different accounts where this money automatically goes into those accounts without me thinking about it. So the first account, is retirement okay so what I want to have here and I'll tell you exactly the amounts that I have going into these accounts every week so for retirement I want to have six thousand dollars at the end of the year so I have one hundred and fifteen dollars a week going into this fund okay every week every Friday like clockwork I don't have to worry about it I don't have to think about it the second is savings general savings and emergency. So if you watch my other videos, you'll know that I always talk about that six to 12 month emergency fund. Other people say three to six months, but I like to err on the safe side. Here I have $50 a week going into this account, okay? The next one is the travel fund. So this travel fund, my wife and I, we love to travel. I think traveling gives you a unique perspective on the world. It allows you to see how other people live so you don't just have some you know, horse with the blinders on point of view in your life and you can actually understand other cultures. This travel fund, you can substitute this for whatever you want. It can be you know, basket weaving, it can be scuba diving, it can be uh, paragliding. Whatever your hobby is or whatever you're really passionate about, that travel fund can be substituted for whatever you want. It's something that'll bring you pleasure and joy in life. So I have $50 a week going in here. The next one is actually the car fund. So whenever you watch my other videos talking about how to save for a car, this is what I'm talking about. It either goes into this Capital One 360 account or it goes directly into a Vanguard brokerage account where I invest it in stocks and uh, real estate investment trusts, whatever. So for this example, I'm just gonna show you that I actually do have money going into a car fund at the tune of, what was it, $100 a week, okay? So 100 bucks for the car fund. And then finally, the big kahuna that my wife and I are saving for right now is the house fund. Okay, so the house fund, I wanna have about $1,000 a month going in there, so that works out to be roughly $230 a week. So, let's recap this very quickly. So I get paid every two weeks at my W-2 job and I get paid X amount of dollars. So out of that X amount of dollars, you need to be able to allocate how much you want flowing into these different accounts. You can create as many or as little accounts as you want, but I noticed that these are uh, the five pillars to leading an enjoyable life. So let's recap. 
I want $6,000 going into my Roth IRA every year, so I have $115 a week going into retirement. I max that out no matter what every year. Uh, savings and emergency, 50 bucks a week. House fund, 230 bucks a week. The car, 100 bucks a week. And then travel, $50 a week. And again, you can pick whatever you want, but the beauty of this and why I'm teaching you on how to automate your savings is because once you understand what your budget is and how much money can actually flow into these buckets, you'll never have to worry about money again. You know why? Because you live off the money that's in here in the checking. So when you wanna pay bills, when you wanna go out to eat, when you wanna make a frivolous purchase or whatever, you wanna buy the new GoPro, for example, that can come out of this because you know you have the other pillars of your life covered with this. The other beauty of doing your finances this way is that you know exactly what you can afford at what time, okay? So if you wanna buy a brand new uh, Ferrari, for example, okay, all you have to do is look at your car fund. Do you have enough money to buy a Ferrari in the car fund? No, well, guess what? You can't afford the Ferrari, okay? You may have you know, Toyota Corolla money, you may have BMW 5 Series money, but you don't have Ferrari money. So this is an instant gut check, putting all emotion aside, you look at the number that you have in that fund, boom, you know exactly what you can afford. So if you wanna buy a house, obviously I have other videos talking about you know, how much house you can afford and things like that. You just look at, hey, can I afford a 20% down payment on this home? Uh, if the home I wanna buy is 300 grand, do I have 60 grand in this account? No, well guess what? I have to go to a, a less expensive home. Same thing with uh, retirement, same thing with travel, all that good stuff. It tells you exactly how much you can fund. And if you're disciplined, this is one of the best ways to build wealth. So the only con that I can think of of doing your finances this way is that typically these online savings accounts, although they are higher than uh, brick and mortar banks, they're only still going to be in the two to two and a half percent range um, in terms of interest rate at the time of this recording. This is June of 2019. So what you can do and what I have done with the car fund, for example, if I know that I'm going to buy a car every five years or if I know that it's going to take me, you know, five to 10 years to save up to buy a house, for example, you can put these amounts from these savings accounts into a brokerage account, investing in something a little bit more risky like stocks, index funds, ETFs, mutual funds, whatever. And if you're looking at a longer uh, time horizon, like five to 10 to 15 years, um, that's something that I actually recommend doing. If you, want, if you need the money quickly, like say for example, um, heaven forbid something happens to you and you need to tap into your savings and emergency fund, you do not wanna put that in a stock market uh, brokerage account or in stocks because those things go up and down like a roller coaster. Uh, you may have put in $2,000 in the stock market and five years later it could be worth $1,800 or it could be worth $4,000, you just never know. My point to that is that for stuff that you need immediately to be liquid on a short-term basis, you don't want to put in stocks. For stuff that you know you're going to buy in 5 to 10 to 15, 30 years, that you can do because it gives you a longer time horizon uh, for those ups and downs to be smoothed out, if that makes sense. So as always, you guys, I hope this helps you. The biggest part of these videos are just to change your mentality and your philosophy and shift the paradigm in your head of what can be done with personal finance. So I've been doing my personal finances like this for about 10 years now because I read The Richest Man in Babylon. It's one of the best books on personal finance that you can get. Uh, and if you got value out of this video, check out the link for that book below. It's a great story. Uh, there, it's also on YouTube. You can listen to it for free if you want. Um, but if you want the book, those, that's the book that I gift the most. The Richest Man in Babylon and also Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover. So if you want that book, check out the link below. Uh, as well, if you found value in this video, please share it with one friend and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a prosperous day.